Hello everybody, welcome to REP Paranormal and Friends. I guess there is no intro tonight because Skype will not play the intro. So here is your host, Kim Purvis. <laughs> well, welcome everybody and we have a special host tonight is Shay. She's going to help me out. Allison couldn't be here tonight. And we got Coy Pittman tonight from Until Dawn Podcast, right? Correct. All right. I got a few questions Allison had ready for me. So, <laughs> um, so what got you all interested in the paranormal and everything? Well, for my wife, she had a, a different, very different upbringing. She grew up in a very uh, small community, and her grandmother actually had a haunted house, very like poltergeist style activity, and. She, they actually had people come down from Duke University because at that time there was still kind of a large uni- uh, push in the universities for that kind of stuff. Okay. As for me, uh, my upbringing was very different. We uh, we moved around a lot, so I never really had that small town or like a haunted house necessarily that I grew up in. I came by uh, by it mainly through like the horror movie genre books and stuff. I did a lot of reading as a kid. I loved you know, ghost stories and stuff like that. Um, Uh But it really wasn't until 2006. We, um, I had just come back from my second deployment and we had just moved into a house while I was on leave and sitting on the couch. It was a tri-level house. So you could see the upstairs through this, through like a little um, walkway and a stairwell. And none of our kids were home. And I see, you know, a blonde, a girl run from one side of the hallway to the other side of the hallway. As I mean, it was as clear as day as, as somebody standing in front of you. You know, I still remember this was 2006, but, you know, she had a white dress on, long blonde hair. It was definitely a shocking experience for me. I came, you know, well, before I retired from the, from the military, I was a uh, law enforcement. So I had a very, you know, black and white very factual scientific base for, you know, if I couldn't see it, touch it, feel it, I didn't believe in it. Yeah. And that kind of shook everything for me and kind of got me more in there. So that was right around the time, you know, ghost hunters was coming on TV, starting to gain a little bit of traction and stuff. So there was a little bit more outlets to try and like, okay, well, there's actually people that really look into this stuff, and everything kind of just snowballed from there. I became more and more involved in it, started you know seeking it out, finding other people that did these types of investigations, and it, everything just kind of led from there. Yeah, and before we go any farther, thank you for your service oh, before thank we you. get going. And we do have a question in chat. Darren wants to know what was your favorite horror book? Um, my favorite one growing up was, well, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm only 36. So my, um, when I was a kid, my favorite, my favorite books, I loved, um, the Goosebump books when I was a kid, as I grew up, my, I really loved, uh, Stephen King. One of my favorite ones was, uh, The Stand and from there it was just, it was kind of whatever I could get my hands on really. And, um. I was kind of excited because they just did those scary stories to tell in the dark, the movie. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I loved those when I was growing up. I it can't was, wait to see that. I, I haven't seen it yet either. I've been working, and, but yes, I loved that, you know, those books. And I was a weird kid in class that liked all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the weird kid Alice? in class grows, grows up to be the cool kid, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping when I grow up that I'll I'll be the cool kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm still we waiting. We gotta grow <laughs> up. I'm still waiting for that to happen. I didn't think we had to grow up. Okay, <laughs> Peter Pan. <Yeah. laughs> I don't have to, but I'm, I keep telling my kids that they have to. Uh, okay, the next question, Allison said, um, "What was your favorite?" place to investigate oh gosh that's that's like asking me like you know what my favorite you know movie is or something uh my favorite place to investigate 
my newest favorite place to investigate has been uh, the Mineral Springs Hotel in Alton, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. We've done we've done quite a few there. Um, actually, we, we did a podcast episode on it where we talked to uh, the own, one of the owners. But it's it never there's never a bad night. There's never a time we've investigated it where something did not happen. Uh, you know, I, that's that was the first place I was touched by by something I couldn't explain. Within minutes, I don't know if they let people go down there. We kind of we kind of had like an unrestricted access when the second time we went, but I don't know if they pe- let people go into uh, what they were calling the gentleman's pool. But it's it. Yeah, it's it's they keep it really restricted because they haven't completely kind of restored that area yet. But we went into it. Uh, Felicia and I were at different ends of the pool, and I felt something almost as if somebody was actually swimming. I felt something like long, uh, drawn out touch against my leg, and within a couple minutes later, you know, Felicia felt the same thing. She turned to me with this look on her face, and I'm like, "Did you just feel something touch you?" And she's like, "Yeah, like." Like something just brushed up against me. So it was almost, in my mind, it was comparable to like if someone brushed up against you swimming and, you know, they're almost like swimming laps. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was definitely probably one of my favorite places. Beyond that, I'd have to say Missouri State Penitentiary. Go ahead. (laughs) You're doing fine. No, (laughs) um, the next one on my list. (laughs) (laughs) Um, that we had, we were down in, I guess I want to say, I call it the dungeon area. It's uh, off of cell block a, where if you've been there, you'll kind of, I think you'll have a better understanding what I'm talking about. Where it's cell block a, where they always do like if there's speakers or anybody, you know, that's where they do it at, but you go, it's in the backside, you go downstairs. It's where the solitary cells are. Uh, we that was down there. We heard footsteps, people walking around. We were with a, a group from Columbia, and probably one of the best EVPs we've ever had. And you know, they were in there, wasn't getting anything. They're like, "Oh well, thanks for nothing." I mean, and within seconds, it was only females in the room. And right as they're about to walk out on the recorder, you hear. Not for nothing, in a male's voice. I mean, clear as I'm talking right now. Wow. And not for nothing. That's kind of a more recent saying. So they're right. trying to tell you something. Yeah. That's one place th- I'd like to go. I would too. Yeah. If you have the opportunity, I completely recommend it. It, it was awesome. I don't recommend it in the summer, though. If you yeah, can find a good like spring fall, because it was super hot in the summer. I can imagine. We're we're going to the squirrel cage here in a couple of weeks, so that should be fun. Yeah, that'll yeah. Um, I ha- I haven't been there, but I've I have it's I've heard good things about it. Yeah, we, this will be our first time being there. Darren in the chat wants to know. What has been your favorite device of choice? Oh gosh, see, I'm. Uh, this is where like the wife and I kind of get divided on. I love all the technology. I am a huge tech guy, so I love any new piece of tech I can get get my hands on. She mm-hmm. is a very basic recorder, you know, and she's good to go. Uh, my favorite has probably been uh, our infrared camera. Oh yeah. We, uh, I really love using that. My next purchase is going to be a uh, thermal. That's my that's my goal. But uh, I really love to get in the pictures with the infrared camera. That was that was the device I got my first like shadow figure on. So it's kind of been always been my go to since then. Yeah, I, I've got the thermal with my security cameras that you buy, and okay. I bought the special thermal to go with it. I got to learn how to use it first before I can take it with me (laughs) because you got to hook it up to the computer and most places don't have Wi-Fi. So I've got to figure out my hotshot and all that stuff to make sure it's working properly. And 
Right. Yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Cause I've made that mistake before too. I've gotten to a location and nothing was set up and it wasn't working right. And I couldn't yep. not being able to use it. That happened that, with our spirit radio, our SB seven. I didn't really know how to how, quite how to use it yet. And I wasn't really getting anything. Yep. But, so. Yeah. We usually test, we go to Allison's folks' house because Allison, when she grew up, there was a ghost that bothered her all the time when she was growing up. So we go over there and test our equipment, and then we know how to work it, and then we go off <laughs> to other places. Well, that's a, yeah, that's always a plus if you have a have a lo- like your go to location that you can test everything out on. Yep. <laughs> Darren has another question. Oh, I missed it. You missed it. Yeah. Do you think the paranormal field is going in the right direction and what needs to be changed? Oh, well, wow. Darren, that's a uh, yeah. Talk <laughs> about the good, talk about the hot hitting questions. Um, in my, in my opinion, this is, you know, this is, I'm just, you know, speaking only for myself. I right. think, I think it's like almost like two sides of the road going that are going headed in the same direction. I think there's uh if you, you know, you have, uh, well, let's, let's say like you know all the TV shows and everything else. I, I think I think they're great. I watch. I'm not gonna lie. I watch all of them to include, you know, ones that people think are ridiculous. Um, I think, but I think there's a definite advantage to having those out there. It makes it makes it less weird, which mm-hmm. I don't mind being weird. But you know, I I can talk about it at work, and people aren't like. You know, giving you that look of like, mm, you need to go talk to somebody. You need some help. It normalizes it. It makes it to where it's socially acceptable. So, because of that, places I think we may not have been able to get into 10, 15 years ago, people are seeing the advantage of letting people into those places. So, in a historical setting, that's great because that's giving money to these buildings so they can restore them, so they can maintain them. You know, we can take our kids there in 10 years because they're still going to be there because of that. So I think... I hear a butt coming. But some of the... One of the biggest problems is that it also takes away, you know, some of the seriousness of it. Um, yeah, it's great to get out there and have a great time. And I, you know, I love doing it and I have, and I have a great time when I do it and I'm not always super serious. I'm actually not very serious majority of the time, but you know, I take, you know, what we do as a whole, very serious. Right. You know, and I do want, I do want those answers. I think we'll get those answers within my lifetime, but some of the stuff makes it seem like, Oh, you've been possessed by a demon. Yeah. And yeah, not everything's comes not everything has ego. To, they right. want the attention and, and that yeah. causes the issue. You know, some of the some of the shows take it go point too much in the entertainment area and not enough in the science area. But I think that's kind of going away. I think people are kind of starting to see the differences because there are shows and stuff or people out there that okay, yeah, this is not, you know, some of this stuff isn't super serious, but this person does take this super, you know, in a serious manner. And we're getting, we're kind of headed towards that direction, I think, to I where so. it's becoming more scientific, less, you know, hokey, not, you know, you know, Ghostbusters type thing. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I do. Darren, I, I agree. Let that answer your question. He comes up with some good ones. Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. That's all right. We love, our, we love our Darren. I'll answer anything he's got. All right, Darren, you heard that? Come on, type him in. <laughs> Let's work for us. See, that's the benefit of live. They ask. Yeah, questions that's for true. You. Yeah. See? Now, but now, so I put my opinion out there. What, what you know? What do either one of you think about that? What uh, do you you know? Kim, uh, flip, flip it on you here. <laughs> I haven't been able to answer him yet, so <laughs> I'm still working on that one. <laughs> my my opinion is pretty much close to yours. I think it um it the paranormal being out there on TV has brought it to a forefront 
that it's now, like you said, being more socially acceptable. Um, it's not so taboo, but it's also kind of some of the shows have crossed the line into entertainment purposes, and then you throw the ego in there, like I said, which, if it's entertainment purposes, not a big deal, except there's new newcomers into the field that don't know the difference between entertainment and um, actual paranormal investigating, and you see people commenting on, this show is so boring, oh my god, why did they bring it back, why did they do this? That's what real paranormal investigating is. You sit in the dark for hours and you get nothing. <laughs> Talking to yourself. Yes. So, yeah, that's that's always you know one of the things I because. Yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I agree with you. Uh, that's always I get a lot of because I'm very upfront about it. You know, with telling people you know what I do, you know about our podcast and everything else because they're going to find out eventually. You know, yeah. they always get oh, what are you doing this weekend? Well, we're heading out to this graveyard but they already know so a lot of it's like oh wow is that like kind of like what it is on tv i'm like mm, no what no we what do we not do rip is... our shirts off and yell demon no yeah. that's not how what <laughs> what it's really like is all the stuff that gets cut out of mm-hmm. people walking around bumping into stuff talking to themselves yep. basically watching paint dry yeah <laughs> uh, wolf in the it. chat Wolf had in the chat said this is for everyone. Is oh, what was it like for your very first time doing an investigation? Oh, Koi, you want to go first? Sure. Um, well, from my very first time was almost kind of like what you see on TV. On TV, the exciting parts, not as in something was happening, just me thinking something was happening. Um, it was a lot of, you know, not sitting still and like, oh, did you hear that? What was that? You know, and it was a whole lot of, you know, my wife was a little more experienced. I was a little, a little bit more excitable back then. And I was like, oh, I just saw a light. Uh, you know, I was taking pictures like, oh, that's, I think that's an orb. You know, long before I learned of, you know, capturing dust in the light. And so it was, you know, to think back on that, it was it was pretty embarrassing, I'm sure, for her. But uh, it was it was still it was exciting enough to keep me going. But the fact that you realize that now. Right. Says something in itself. Do you know what I mean? Like. You learned from that and you've moved because we've all been there. No matter, oh, absolutely. No matter what people say, we've all been there. Yeah. And, I, and nowadays I love, you know, meeting people that are brand new to the field. Uh, when um, we were at, com- at conferences or, you know, I spoke at a conference back in 2017 and, you know, meeting all these new people that were just so excited to sh- and you know, show me their pictures and everything else. And I, it was great. And I told, you know, and I was, told them all, you know, keep going, keep doing it, you know, and it was, it was really because it reminded me of when I was brand new. And I think sometimes when you're in something for so long, you kind of, you kind of forget about that. And so it's, you know, it's, it's exciting. And to think back on, you know, how far we've come. Yeah, I agree. I'll agree with that one. Yep. Let's see. Um, Darren's got another question in chat here. If you come across a full body apparition, who would you want it to be and what would you say? Oh gosh. <laughs> I plead the fifth. This is all you. I me too. <laughs> yeah, it's this is a guest question only. <laughs> <laughs> guest question only. Yeah. Um oh my gosh. Uh I th- I think I would like to if I could meet a full body apparition I think I'd like to meet Johnny Cash. Oh, nice choice. Um, and I think that would be the most interesting EVP session anybody could ever have. It would be. Definitely. I, I can only imagine. I can't. I'm like picturing his voice in my head now. Like, what would it be sounding like over the... <laughs> over the recorder, listening back, and I'm like, oh, Jesus. 
I grew up on Johnny Cash because my dad and his birthday were the same day. So dad loved Johnny Cash. So I've got these songs going through my head now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, it's the easiest answer. Cause yep. who's, who's going to be upset about that one? Yep. Uh, no, hopefully nobody. Right. No, 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 no one I want to be associated with. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, sorry. How long? Go ahead. You, I think you already kind of answered this, but what year? How long have you been starting the actual investigating side of things? So we didn't actually get started investigating. Uh, our ex- experience is kind of unique. We didn't really start getting getting investigating and stuff like that until about two thousand and seven. Um, I was in the I was in the military. So we moved around a lot, and it was a lot of getting everything kind of secondhand. I felt like we were, when we got into it, we were like way behind the curve. So we just went into it super strong. Yep. And, you know, so in 2007, I'd say we kind of dabbled in it a little bit. But in 2010, when we came back here, this is to the Fort Leonard Wood area, it was like, you know, Everywhere we looked, we could find out we were able to find something. And we, so we'd already kind of dabbled in it back then. But when we came back to Missouri, that was when everything just kind of, it was like the perfect storm. You know, we started going up to Alton, Illinois, to the paranormal conferences up there. And so that's when we really started getting to, getting into it. Felicia got involved with the group out of Columbia. And we just, anywhere we could go, we went. Cool. Yeah. Darren's got another question for you. He's he's our question guy. Surprise. That's all right. What do you what do you fear the most about the paranormal? Oh man. Oh my gosh, Darren. Um <laughs> what do I fear the most? Um I'm gonna take the easy out and I'm gonna say I what I fear the most is like something happening to my wife while we're on investigation. Uh, so that would that would you know that's the easy answer. If I had to say if it was just me, um, I would say probably something happen, happening mentally, as in, you know an actual you know not like you see on TV, but an actual some sort of you know d- maybe maybe not demonic, but an evil you know presence. And right. something happened from that, that, you know, taking something home with me. Yeah. It's better than my answer. What's your answer? I, my two biggest fears in life are the dark and the woods. <laughs> and I'm a paranormal investigator, so I, I'm facing them daily. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> I do oh, you, it, you, but, yeah. You'd be right there with right there with Felicia. Felicia will go into any abandoned building, yep. haunted graveyard, Eastern State Penitentiary. It does it does oh, not matter. There. I love that place. But I can't get her to go to a haunted house with me. Like I, the commercial, like oh, let's oh, go to a haunted I'll house. Do. I laugh through them, but jump scares and all that. Yeah. No, absolutely will not. She will not go one bit. <laughs> and she's also scared of the dark. I am legit. People like, how can you be a paranormal investigator and be afraid of the dark? Because I work through my bullshit. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Now, see, I don't like horror movies, but I'm in. I I go out and look for ghosts, but I don't like horror movies. (laughs) I will watch them, but I don't like them. (laughs) Oh, see, I love. That's that's the opposite. I absolutely love. I'll watch any any. Anything, even if it's I'll ridiculous. I'll even watch those B-flick. Is that what yes. they call B-flicks? I'll watch yeah. anything horror-related. Um, I also only started watching horror movies 15 years ago. So, like, now I want, you know, anything. Show it to me. See, I started very young. I remember hi- hiding behind the couch watching, like, oh, Friday the 13th Darren, when I was a kid. Darren, Sorry. Darren's question disappeared, but that's on my list to ask you. Go ahead. Go with your question, then I'll bring this one up. Now what? I lost the question, too. (laughs) He he deleted it. He deleted the question, but it's on my list. He knows what he wrote. Go ahead and ask it. Come on, Darren. 
Don't let me down now. Do do you believe in provoking? Um, it depends. And I'll say, like, I don't believe in malevolent provoking. But I believe in almost not so much provoking as in I believe in motivating. So if I feel like, you know, we're getting some something good and it kind of dies down, you know, it's almost like encouraging bars. Like, I don't believe in meaning, hey, bastard. Right. No, I can't say I can't. I can't say that I I do. I don't th- I don't see a reason for it. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't treat a person like that in real life. So, I don't feel the need to do it to someone that's already passed. Exactly. I agree. I'll agree on that one. I I am th- that's my passion in the paranormal. No no provoking. I mean, <laughs> To get, there's a difference between provoking and provoking. Like, sometimes you make statements that you want to get an answer to, but that's not, I don't think that's what Darren means by provoking. Right. No, I, yeah, I think I understand what he, what yeah. he meant by his question. And hopefully that, you know, that answered it. But yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't, I just don't see the reason for it. I don't see a need for it. I think they you know. earned the respect. Right. And deserve it, so. And Darren wants to know, do you like using Ouija boards during an investigation? I I like using I like using Ouija board. I haven't used one in an investigation. That's not to say I wouldn't. I have um unfortunately nobody can see it. So me looking up at it doesn't do anybody any good, but I have <laughs> a a 1940s William Fold original and Ouija board that we ha- that we have. We haven't used it. But, you know, that's not to say I wouldn't. I just haven't had the opportunity. I think they're great. It's no, to me, they're no different than using an EVP, a recorder, or, you know, any other tool that you're going to like, oh, light this, you know, light this K2 meter up or turn on these flashlights. You're doing the exact same thing with different tools, in my opinion. Guys, I got to step away for a minute, so I'm going to mute my stuff. I'll be back. In Adios. A yep. I'll be back, or or the show will never end. If I don't come back, you guys are yeah, we'll that's just true. we'll just keep talking all night. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As long as Darren keeps asking questions, we'll just he keep will. on going. He is awesome. Yeah. He is awesome. He will keep asking questions. So Darren, keep them busy while I'm gone. I need three minutes. <laughs> I also wanted to know uh, what's your thoughts on the Bigfoot. Oh my gosh, my thoughts on the Bigfoot. Um, so. With that, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of weird. I'm probably one of the few people that actually has an absolute love of the Bigfoot, and maybe maybe I'm not an absolute love of the Bigfoot, but I've never had a Bigfoot encounter. Right. I've never you know I've never been walking in the woods and seen him or or her. It's not necessarily just a him, and. But it was one of those things that I heard about when I was a kid, when I was, you know, just taking in anything I could on, at the time, I didn't think it was paranormal. I thought it was just, you know, ghosts and monsters. Right. But whenever, whenever I started kind of digging more into it, I found out that, you know, this isn't just some made up thing. It, you know, it's, it's real. And so, to me, I never needed, like, to see it after that. I just kind of always believed that it was. You know, it's mm-hmm. just one of those things that it's not necessarily something you have to see to believe in. And so, from that, it kind of just, you know, I kind of see it as, like, one of the last real, you know, mysteries. You know, there's so many people have... And it's found this or that video footage, you know, it's, there's something there. You may not necessarily be the Bigfoot, so to speak, but it's something. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, that was kind of like my whole, you know, my take on it. I, uh, now I kind of focus more on like, you know, stuff in Missouri. Mm-hmm. There's our Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the person you want to investigate with that you haven't yet? Oh gosh. Um I let's see. This one's gonna this one's gonna sound really corny. 
but I absolutely, I absolutely love them. I want to investigate with the Ghost Brothers. Oh, those guys would be fun. <laughs> I absolutely. That's like my, you know, that's like one of my guilty pleasures. I absolutely love that show. I was so disappointed when it went away and was like, you know, a kid in a candy store when I found out they were coming back. Yes, I haven't missed a show since they came back. <laughs> But I think I think mine would be Grant Wilson from Ghost Hunters. I think yes, I, I agree. I think that would be uh, awesome. I've uh, I got to investigate with some of the members of Taps. Um, I got to investigate with Steve. I got to investigate with Adam. Uh, Felicia's got to investigate with Adam and Amy. Bef- mm-hmm. uh, so I, those, I investigated those guys are all with wonderful. Adam at Ferrar School. He, okay. he he came to the Ferrar School and I. I investigated with him there he he is he's so much fun <laughs> oh he's hilarious <laughs> yeah when we was allison i i'm reading all allison's questions right now so how did you come up with your topics for your podcast show um that's a that's it we some of the topics are suggested to us we have, you know, we have some listeners that, you know, and we throw it out every time. You know, hey, you want to hear about something? You know, tell us what you want to hear about and we'll do it. Right. Uh, that's, you know, that's how we ended up doing the, our Wendigo show, which, you know, to me, I love doing topics I don't know a whole lot about because it's, you know, it's that learning. I get, you know, we get to learn about it. But other than that, we just, we have this huge list of all, you know, every time something like, oh, we should do a show on that. We write it down. And then we kind of just go from there. Right now, we're trying to we're trying something a little bit different. We're going state to state and trying to pick uh, that uh, something from that state that's unique only to that state. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a lot of uh, legends and lore. We are our last uh, our last episode was on the Dead Children Playground. Yeah, I caught parts of that. Tonight, when I was going through your stuff. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Re- I never recommend anyone ever listen. <laughs> it's always you gotta listen. <laughs> it's always you know. It's always hard. And I'm like, oh gosh, does, does it sound awful? In my it mind, sound like, bad to me. In, in my mind, it all, I'm like, oh, it always sounds awful. And it was another one of those things where I didn't. I never realized I had an ex. <laughs> um, uh, I always. I never realized I had an accent. Until yeah. I until I listened to the audio from our first show, and I'm like, "What in the world? Why do I sound so country?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" I, I, you know, they're gonna think that this is some like hillbilly in the woods doing a podcast. <laughs> but uh, so I that's sound always like a math hole. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she wanted to know about Waverly Hills. Oh, you that one you'd have to ask my wife about that one. I uh so that was one of those unfortunate experiences where I had to work and she got to go to Waverly Hills. Ah. So I I haven't been there. Um So yeah, I I don't have any I don't unfortunately I don't have any stories from Waverly Hills. Okay, but what about Ohio State? <laughs> you guys are going to think I don't get to I don't go anywhere. I no don't kidding. have I did not go to Ohio State. She went to Ohio State. Um, I can tell you about one of the experiences that she had, though. Okay. Uh, so there was a, a large room, and she went. She was sitting on the bed. It was, no, it, I'm sorry. It wasn't the bed. It was a bench. So she's sitting on a bench, and they're kind of having a conversation back and forth, asking questions and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. out of nowhere... The bottom of the bench gets hit so hard that it that it moves her. Wow! And there was only two people on the bench, so I know nobody else. You know, nobody else did it. And she, not to mention, she's not one that would ever make up any type of story. She just doesn't right. need to. She's had enough encounters far beyond anything that someone can make up. And because the person, not to mention the person next to her, was my mom. Oh. <laughs> So she's a she's a credible source, you know. That helps. <laughs> right. Yeah, that helps. What so is that was um, psychiatric hospital. I listened to the episode. Uh, the last episode I listened to um, was from February tonight. Um, 
And you guys are talking about a psychiatric hospital. Um. Have you been to more? Psych- you probably you're an investigator. You've probably been more to more, more than one. <laughs> like psychiatric hospital. Um, trying to think. Let's see, they, we did Ohio State Reformatory, Missouri State Penitentiary, Mineral nope. Springs. It was one I didn't recognize. I should have wrote it down. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's um. Oh, you know what? I bet it was Glore. That might be it. It's uh, St. Joseph. Yes. And we're just planning a return trip there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, well, it's it used to be a psychiatric hospital. Now it's a it's a museum, multi level. I highly recommend it. Oh yeah, my wife must be listening right now because I just got a text message out of nowhere that said Glor. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Felicia. <laughs> That's weird. I'm not saying bye, Felicia. I'm saying hi, Felicia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was Glore, and it was yeah, it's another amazing place. That obviously, if we're going to return there, and we were, I know one time we were sitting there, just you know everything's super quiet. They hear screaming. I mean, just blood curdling screaming. And there's only, you know, there's only like maybe six of us in the building. And it's so spread out. You're not, you know, so we get on the radios, we start, you know, everybody, and it was nobody. Nobody was screaming. It was, you know, I had, uh, I had a bag in a chair that got thrown out of the chair wow. outside the morgue. Oh. That was an exciting time. That was my first time getting to lay on one of the, in the, you know, in the little cold freezer. Where you can pull mm-hmm. out the little metal thing, so me and I, a friend laid in there. That was pretty creepy. I don't know how many people that have done that alive. Uh, I don't know if I would do it, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I've said, uh, I've said that a lot though, and then I get in the moment, and they're like, "No, you go in that, you go in that <laughs> dumb waiter, and you sit there for twenty minutes, and I've done it." So. We're, we're gonna have you sit there by yourself in the dark. Yeah, they, yeah. They've done adrenaline it. gets going, and you'll you'll do all kinds of ridiculous paranormal or things. Or ego, or ego. Yeah, that like, too. You, know, you want to yeah. say I won't do it? I'm going to prove you wrong. I might pee myself, but I'm going to do it. I'll just do I'll it. sit in this graveyard by myself in the dark. Yeah. They want me to sit in a, a lay in a coffin. I would not do that. That I would not. I would not do either. I can't. I can't say I wouldn't. In the, in the heat of the moment, I, I probably would. If Even Felicia the was spirits here, she, were telling me to lay in the coffin, <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. At uh, one one experience we had with with spirits doing stuff, we uh, we were at Mineral Springs again. We were all in the basement sitting, there, you know, and we literally we asked if you know the spirit wanted somebody to leave. Every every meter in that room went off. And of course, that person was you know was courteous and left. But yeah, that was that was definitely a rare experience with being told to do something. <laughs> Darren wants to know what is on your bucket list. Uh, my bucket list. Uh, Stanley Hotel. Nice. Is definitely oh. on there. I want to go. I want to go to a lot of the places that Felicia's already got to go to without me. Ohio State, Eastern State. Um, I know we got some pretty some big uh, trips planned. We're gonna be, of course, we're gonna be going back to Glore, but I really want to do the Stanley Hotel, and I want to go to the Winchester House. Oh, Eastern yeah. State Pen, I've been to, and I highly recommend it. Winchester House is on my bucket list. I've been to the cemetery in Connecticut, but never been to the house. But that's on my top five, so. And I like okay. to go to Waverly Hills, of course. Yeah, Never. you know, it's it, it, I would, of course, if I had the opportunity, it would go. It's just not on my bucket list. Only yeah, you get five choices. I pick the ones that <laughs> most of them are like within a few hours of me. So I have the opportunity. I can go and then there's Witch's right. House cross country. He's yeah, Alcatraz. yeah. Alcatraz, Alcatraz would be a good one. That I've would never be one. been. Yeah, I've never. I've been to Alcatraz on the uh, the historical tour, 
but I've never got to do an investigation there. I, yeah, I definitely think that would be an awesome. There's so much yeah. history there. Yeah. Oh, hey, Have you ever investigated question. in Iowa? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jay. No. Nope. Have you ever been up to Iowa? Have I ever been to Iowa? Yeah, investigating in any places here in Iowa. Uh, we did the Vliska. Nice. And that was that was that was another awesome place. We actually we doubled up. We did Velisca and we did Malvern. So we oh, did, yeah. I have like a little twofer. It, yeah. I have not been to Iowa yet. Most of my pair my pair of peeps are in Iowa, but I'm stuck here in New Hampshire. So I feel you being you know we're we're stuck down here in uh Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um Velisca was my very first investigation. Oh wow, that's how many uh, people can that, say that? Right, that's that's going. That's definitely going all in. That was going all in, and plus I got scratched that night up in the attic. Felicia had a, some really kind of extreme uh, experiences up in the attic. A lot of like uh, you know feeling pressure and just this, like a weird feeling of like kind of a dread, hearing voices, seeing. Like uh, shadows is ve- definitely uh, one of the more active and uh, extreme investigations we've had. Yeah, the first time I went, I, I I could hear it with my own ears. It sounded like a tricycle riding around in the attic, and we caught it on the recorder. But you think I can find it on the recorder now? <laughs> <laughs> I've got everything on the computer. You think I can find that little spot? Not right. <laughs> nope. nope. Wolf has a question. Yeah. Before I lose it. What kind of protection? Is there a place that you will not go to? Nope. That wasn't it, but okay. I missed okay. one. This was just before that one. All right. Sorry. Thank you. She's a pro, not me. <laughs> no. So is there a place? There's not. There's no place I wouldn't go. Um, and given the opportunity, I will go anywhere in this world to do an investigation Especially if I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> that would, that would I feel be nice. you there. <laughs> this is probably the one of the most expensive hobbies you could have. Definitely. Amen. Amen. It is. Okay. Well, second question is: What kind of protection do you use when you go on an investigation? And see, that's a. I I really I don't. Um, a lot of I know a lot of a lot of groups. Will you know? They'll use sage. They'll you you know. They'll kind of do a, maybe do a prayer if before and after. Um, I don't. I kind of use uh, you know positive energy and a good attitude. That's and, intent. You know, that is a form of in, that is a form so, of protection. It's your intent, right? And I'm I think not I, allowing you to do this. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I think that's the best form of protection. Myself. I've had. Felicia and I together, we've had, I would say, maybe one bad encounter out of all the investigations that we've done. We were at the uh, First Unitarian Church, and I won't say that I was scratched because I couldn't confirm it. But I definitely, at one point, standing upstairs um, right behind the, the, I guess, the altar leading into the other room, I definitely felt a warm sensation in a very, you know, in a line on my back, but there was nothing there. So I won't necessarily say that, but in the basement, we were using um, a Nikon camera and taking pictures, taking pictures. And then poof, the camera just completely fried for no reason there. It didn't get hot. Nothing, you know, nothing like that. It just was out. It was gone. Never would not ever turn on again. There was no like, the bat opened it up. There was no signs of any damage to it. So that's the closest thing to a, a negative, so to speak, experience that we've had. Ooh. Darren wants to know, after the tornado in Joplin, Missouri, did you go through there and did you think the whole town would have been haunted after the tornado? <laughs> that I mean, it, that's kind of... It seems like it definitely should have been almost. I mean, there was, it was such a tra- tragedy. Um, at that time, I was still in the military, so I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to go down there. We were uh, we were trying to, 
but it was more for uh, the recovery efforts. We want we were right. trying to get our unit to go down there in order to help with the recovery and the cleanup and stuff like that. I was in a military police unit because I was in, with being an MP, so we yeah. would have went down there more in that aspect. I didn't have the opportunity to go down. I've been down there since then, and it's uh, you know, it's still you, you know you can still feel it even after all this time. It's really. Uh, kind of it's really tragic to kind of go through there and know you still feel that loss when you yeah. go through there yeah and darren has another question go ahead shay i oh no i just said i can only imagine i don't think i just like when the tornado went through here through marshalltown it's like i i, I don't think i could investigate it because if there was lives you know it's just the tragedy and, you know, everything going through your head and stuff. And It hits too close to home is what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every investigation we do, it's somebody's tragedy. But when it's too close to home, it's kind of off limits in your heart. Not in your brain, but yeah. in your heart. Yeah. Okay, Darren has a question. Have you been to the exorcist house? No, um, that's that's another guilt, kind of guilty pleasure of mine. I think Darren might be stalking me. Uh, <laughs> no, I haven't, unfortunately. I will definitely say unfortunately because I would absolutely love to do that. That would have been on my bucket list had I thought about it at the in the moment. I haven't. I've um, so an author, uh, Troy Taylor, wrote a book, a very great book, and it's called "The Devil Came to St. Louis." You can get it probably anywhere you anywhere you can get books. You can get it, um, and I, I, you know I read that cover to cover, which is pretty big for me because currently I'm not a reader. I don't like reading at all. I don't know why. I guess I, I loved it when I was a kid, but so anything I've been able to find on The Exorcist, we did an episode on it. That was uh, that was our first real episode, and. Uh, because, just because of my love of it and so anything i can get my hands on relating to it we do but i would absolutely investigate that in a heartbeat i'd be there tomorrow if they <laughs> if they made the call yeah definitely <laughs> yeah. let's see if we have any more questions here um Darren says thank you for your service oh thank you i I don't think I've missed any questions, but uh, Gina's a- Gina Marie says I don't think scratches are necessarily bad. I get them off often, and that Eloise, um, my back scratched bad. I feel that they're just trying to get your attention. Do you feel the same? Oh, no, I, th- I have actually- an opinion. Go ahead, you go first. Uh, okay. <laughs> I uh no I, I I agree. I think that's you know the perfect attitude to have and that's the attitude I have. That's why I, I you know I said I don't necessarily think it's negative because I mean if anybody has kids who hasn't been scratched by their kid or a cat or a dog or anything else, you know, it's not it's like she said just you know it's someone trying to get your attention. Yeah. And you know they're trying to if they're trying to they're doing that it's definitely not necessarily negative. They may not have any other means to get, you know, you're trying to. You're asking them questions. They're trying to reach out to you. Exactly. So yeah, it's definitely not necessarily negative, and I wouldn't consider it negative. No. All for all we know is they're trying to get our attention, and they work up the energy and work up the energy, and finally, they think they're touching us, and they're scratching us. Right. It's not. You know. It's not always going to be like uh, Patrick Swayze and Ghost. Yeah. Uh, we we can wish, but no. You know. Well, when I got scratched at Beliska, I didn't feel evil. It, it was low enough on my back. It felt like it was a little kid, you know, trying to tug on my shirt, but scratched me at the same time. So I, I right. didn't feel scared about it. No. I have a question. Another hard one. Oh. What is, I don't even know how to word it because it just popped in my head. <laughs> what are your feelings on demonic? Um, anything demonic? Do you think it's overrated? Do you think people throw it out there too much? Um, uh, I, spirits are misunderstood. Yeah, I think I think I definitely uh, think that it's a lot of misunderstandings. Yeah, that 
not you know it's just like you know in everyday life everything's not necessarily good and evil um some people you know they're just some people were just crappy pe- people so they're going to be crappy spirits that's um, what i say if you're an asshole in life you're going to be an asshole in death exactly yeah exactly yeah. now with that being said i do think there is an you know there's definitely an unseen evil yep out there you know it's been in some form or another it's been talked about for centuries regardless of what your beliefs are every belief has you know that Something light wrong. and that dark yeah darren has another question if you have a chance to build a device for your investigation what would it be and why uh gosh I would. Uh, I'd like to build a device that would make it easier to see and communicate. I th- um, in my mind, it would be something along the lines that almost like, pretty much like almost like Skype. You know, be skyping to the other side, so to speak, where you know you could. You remember? The, I don't know if anybody remembers from when they were a kid that that type and talk type device where you could hit the keys and it would say the word. Yeah. Something along uh, kind of well, something kind of along that lines. Uh, speak and spell or something. Yes, like that, there or? you go. Speak and spell. Yes, yeah, something like the the new wave, uh, n- new age speak and spell. I don't know about you, but I'm not smart enough to build something. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have. Yeah. I'll just, I, I, I got to rely on everybody else. To work these devices. <laughs> Never mind. Never. You know. Oh, I'm echoing. Oh, I'm echoing. Dan wants to know if you think the Ozarks are haunted. Oh, abs- absolutely, without a doubt. Um, you know, mainly because you know my very my first real paranormal experience. I always, you know, anytime I'm ever talking about, it, I always call it my first real paranormal experience. You know, that was you know right here, one town over. In the, you know, in the Ozarks, there's tons of, you know, folklore within the Ozarks. It's, it has a very rich, you know, history. Uh, you know, a lot of very unfortunate events, you know, happen in the Ozarks, you know, from the Civil War, you know, on to the Prohibition times, as well as, you know, just unfortunate, you know, accidents and murder. So there's definitely a lot of haunted locations you know, but, but we're also kind of in the Bible Belt, so a lot of that stuff is kind of not spoken about so freely. But you know, if you get, you really get to talking to a lot of the you know older generation that are willing to speak about it, they'll tell you you know of the experiences that they've had. Cool. I don't see any more questions right offhand. While there's nine questions right now. Uh, why don't you tell everybody how to find you and where to find you and all right. So, you know, we keep, we try to keep it pretty simple. Um, anywhere on social media, you can find us at until dawn podcast. You can, you know, we email us at until dawn podcast at gmail.com. We also have a phone number. It's uh, I don't know our phone number off the top of my head. Any other <laughs> time, but, <laughs> but uh, I want to say it's like nine one three seven zero three Dawn. But yeah, the easiest way to reach out to us is on social media. Cool. So, did you get to go to the Kansas City Paracon this time? No. So we were invited. Uh, up there and unfortunate not really unfortunately because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that we were at walt disney world ah. when, it, when it happened our friend uh jason koopsick uh put helps put you know he puts it on that's his his thing mm-hmm. and every year he's like oh are you guys gonna come this year and we're like no actually we're you know because three years in a row now he scheduled it when we're on vacation i i told him like i don't think you really want us to come because you're always scheduling that. Yeah. See, 
<laughs> so I'm with the wife. Just yes. Yeah. So in between that that conversation and now the last year for for our anniversary I I took her to Walt Disney World just the two of us. I'm not going to lie, it was a blast, you know. Take your kids, but don't don't you know, don't be afraid to go without cuz you uh, you will have a blast. <laughs> Um, Darren has she, another question here. How do you feel about sleep paralysis mixed with shadow people? Oh my gosh. God. This is when Felicia needs to be on the show. She <laughs> is all about sleep paralysis. Yeah, we, Felicia, we're going to have to do this again. And I'm, yeah. We need to, we'll have to do this again. I'm going to get her on here when, you know, we'll figure it, we'll figure it out. Cause she, she works evenings sometimes and that's why she's not here tonight. But yeah, we'll I figured out. <laughs> I've, I've had one experience with sleep paralysis, but it, I was a kid. I was, I was in high school at the time, probably my sophomore year. And it's the, it's the one and only time I've ever had an experience with it. Um, I we we did an episode on it and I learned actually a ton. It's a whole lot more common than I ever realized. Uh, it's you know, a, a lot the, thing. That's why. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of st- older stories come. You know, with the old hag story and stuff like that, as long as well as like incubus and succubus theories. And uh, yeah, it's it's very real, and uh, a lot of there's a lot of correlation between. You know, sleep paralysis and shadow people, whether that's projected from the the individual's mind or actual shadow people, because I do believe in shadow people, and uh, it's very it's very interesting topic, and uh, it's yeah very real. Yeah. Well, we're getting down to the end. Does anybody else have any more questions before we come to the close here? Real quick, we'll give them a little time. But yeah, we we appreciate having you on. We'll have to get you and your wife on. Absolutely, yes. yeah. We'd we'd love to do it. I've you know, this has been an absolute blast. And I want to thank you, Shay, for helping out. Oh my god, yes. this was my pleasure. I mean, um, I the guest is awesome. Oh, thank you, you. I I agree. I love Kim, but you know, I'm kind of partial, but. I've never met Koi before, and this was awesome, and I highly enjoyed it. So, yeah, thank you guys. Th- me, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> Even though I talk a lot, but I oh, do we not, don't mind. I do no, not it's... swear. <laughs> me neither. I was, I was proud of myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> My show, every other word's f bomb. I'm like, no swearing, Shay, none. Yeah, we uh, we always earn our explicit rating on ours. So yeah. They're 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 all marked explicit, just in case I pop on. <laughs> yeah, with Allison too. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying awesome show, awesome guest. They are loving. Oh, thank you. you, thank you. And we're gonna some, have to. Want me to do some shutouts while we're waiting? Yes, please. I'm gonna go as far back as I can. Everybody knows. Um, my phone does not always cooperate in. Spreaker does not, but we have me. We have, of course, Darren with the awesome questions. Yes. Um, Darren, thank you for all the awesome questions. I just have to say that. Darren is We We, awesome. we love Darren. Yes, thank you, Darren. Um, Jen, Jen was in there for a bit. Uh, of course, we had the beautiful Gina Marie in there for a little bit. Oh, not a little bit. She was in there for the whole show. I take that back. Um, we had Luna. Hello, Luna. I'm trying. We had Matt. We had Allison. I don't scroll as quick. This is why I have a co-host. Um, I know Wolf was in there. Wolf was in there, yeah. Yeah. Help. I'm I'm trying. I'm getting there just a minute. I'm scrolling as fast as I can. (laughs) I'm always afraid of missing somebody, but then I go so slow. I think we might have hit everybody. I think we're forgetting a couple of people, but that's okay. They know we love them. Yeah. 
Uh, there's a couple of names I didn't recognize. That's why I'm saying I think I forgot somebody. I didn't see anybody. Anyway, thank you. Whether you're in chat, yes. not in chat, thank you for listening. Make sure you check out Until Dawn podcast. Um, I listened to a few of them today and well worth it. And of course, Definitely. Kim and Allison put on a great podcast, if I do say so myself. Yes, I agree. I'm not usually by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do make a good Allison. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If anybody I could I fill Allison's different. shoes, it would be me. <laughs> yep, definitely. So, all right, guys. Is that it? Are we done? We are done for the night. Okay, guys. Thank you. And, hey, can I – Can I? Uh, actually, I own the network, so I can say. Um, <laughs> tomorrow night, season two of Shay's Paranormal Chat is kicking off. With Charlotte Harden and Lyle Lotz, um, Ghost of War series. I'm excited to be back. This will be awesome. So check it out. 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. So everybody, check out Until Dawn podcast. And thank you. Have a great night.